new details about a crash in southern Kentucky that killed a Kentucky sheriff's deputy. Hundreds of pages of documents relating to one of the state's biggest bourbon heists have been unsealed by a judge. What they say ahead. Alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 430. Good afternoon, Sam Dick and Amber Philpot reporting. We are learning a lot more about a southern Kentucky man killed in a violent crash yesterday. Sean Cook was a deputy sheriff in Russell County and a volunteer firefighter. He died Monday when he was in a crash while driving his personal vehicle. WKYT's Phil Pendleton spent the day in Russell County and has more on how Cook is being remembered. It's our top story at 4.30. Sean Cook was a Russell County native. His job was as a deputy sheriff, but in his free time, he used that, I'm told, to serve others. Cook was Unit 1470 for the Russell County Sheriff's Department, working in court security and as a transport officer. His sheriff says Cook worked primarily with prisoners, taking them from the jail to the courthouse or other facilities for treatment. He also worked as a volunteer firefighter in Russell Springs, meaning his day job was taking care of prisoners. Often in his free time, he was fighting fires. Regardless of what he did, officials say he did it well. I mean, he was right there for all the other deputies. Uh, no matter when you needed him, he would be there for you. I am told that the funeral for Sean Cook is still being planned, but that that service will be used to honor his life as a deputy sheriff and as a firefighter. In Russell County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Bernard Funeral Home in Russell Springs is currently handling the arrangements. Well, scattered showers and thunderstorms are possible in our area tonight. And the showers will increase the next few days as another cold front sweeps in. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Uh, lots of changes we just mentioned right there. Yeah, a lot of big changes on the way over the next, so oh, roughly 36, 48 hours or so. And speaking of changes from where we are now compared to where we were at this same point yesterday, a lot of yellow and reds on the map. That's showing warmer air today. Now, of course, yesterday we had the clouds. We had widespread rains across much of the area, so that naturally that's going to keep the temperatures down. So we're running several degrees warmer than at this same point yesterday with upper 70s to low 80s across much of eastern and southern Kentucky, uh, around 84, Lexington, Frankfurt, and into Richmond. Live first alert defender, isolated thunderstorms into parts of eastern Kentucky have been trying to develop, but we've not seen the same widespread nature of the rain and thunderstorms that we had yesterday, though watching some boomers north of 40 here into the volunteer state of Tennessee. It's an isolated shower storm possible as we go through the evening, though. A lot of areas should remain on the dry side with a tropical atmosphere that is firmly in place. You mentioned that strong cold front that is on the way. Coming up here in a little bit, we will track that front and show you why the old jet stream taking a big dip will unleash. Another round of pleasant temperatures. Guys, that's in a little over 10 minutes from now. All right, that sounds good, Chris. Thank you. We are following a developing story in South Lexington. Firefighters rescued a dog just about an hour ago at a farm on Grimes Mill Road. The dog fell down a 50 foot sinkhole. WKYT was the only station there for the dog's rescue. We'll have the story and more of the exclusive video ahead on WKYT News at 5. More than 250 pages of documents relating to a bourbon theft ring in central Kentucky have been released. The records were unsealed after a Franklin Circuit Court judge ruled that defense attorneys involved in the case did not have a compelling enough reason to prevent public access. The newly released documents provide in-depth detail about Gilbert Kurtzinger. He's the man prosecutors say led a nine-member organized crime ring that obtained and sold bourbon. Donald Trump didn't get picked for jury duty this week, but he is topping another list as a new poll shows that Trump is getting the most support from Republican registered voters. He is also gaining support faster than any of his rivals. Emily Schmidt has more on the dilemma that causes for candidates on the campaign trail. Well, this aren't ready. Yet. 17 yeah, Republicans ready. running for president. There's talk about issues. The end game is to take ISIS out. We must keep our people safe. I would send more troops back to Iraq. There's foreign policy, domestic policy, too. Repeal Obamacare entirely. And we have to have stronger job growth. Innovation, not regulation. But as much as 16 of those candidates would love to talk issues, they keep getting asked about something else. Mr. Trump now has The other candidate, Donald Trump, 
leading them all in the polls. The angry candidate, the one who is looking to divide, is the one getting attention right now. The majority of Republican voters in the CNN ORC poll say Trump is their favorite. His 24 percent support is more than the next two candidates combined and 22 points higher than challenger Rick Perry, who points out at this point four years ago, Rudy Giuliani was in the lead. This is a snapshot in time, and uh, these are very fluid races, and it's a long time until the primaries. The poll shows Trump as the top choice for the economy, illegal immigration, and social issues such as abortion and same-sex marriage. One potential trouble spot. More Republican voters say their chances to win in 2016 are better without Donald Trump than with him at the top of the ticket. Thanks so much. Thank you for the chance to speak. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. So God candidates are trying to leave their own impression on voters. Shoulder. Even as Trump scheduled no campaign events Tuesday and still got press for leading the pack. In Washington, I'm Emily Schmidt. The next time you take a stroll in downtown Lexington, you may find the city a little easier to navigate. More than 50 new signs are being placed around the city, giving directions and encouraging people to walk. 64 additional signs will be placed near the UK and Transylvania campuses. They will direct people to major landmarks and they'll tell you how long it will take for you to walk there. The face of Kentucky Fried Chicken is getting yet another makeover. Actor Norm MacDonald will portray a revamped Colonel Sanders for KFC. The fast food chain reintroduced the iconic promotional figure three months ago. Colonel Sanders had not been the central feature of a promotional spot for decades. MacDonald's fellow Saturday Night Live alum Daryl Hammond has been portraying Sanders. The dental office run by the man who killed Cecil the Lion is open for business without its leading dentist. Dr. Walter Palmer is accused of paying $55,000 for a hunt in Zimbabwe where he killed the beloved lion Cecil. The office was closed since the incident became public. The practice released a statement saying that Dr. Palmer is no longer on site. For the first time in the 60-year history of the Army Rangers, two women have earned the Elite Ranger tab. As Hannah Daniels reports, this was the first time women were admitted to the course after the Pentagon decided to make combat roles available to women in January. After 62 days of grueling training, two women are now on their way to graduating alongside 94 men from the Army's Elite Ranger School. The pair was among 19 females who took part in the first ever co ed training session in the school's history. Training that includes a notoriously tough course. Carrying their rucksack, uh, which, which uh, is pretty heavy, running missions, uh, learning how to do patrolling in different types of environment. None of that is aided by the fact that the students probably average between two and four hours of sleep a night. The Army has not yet released their names, in part to protect them from harassment by anyone who doesn't agree with the idea of females wearing the coveted Ranger tab. They started the grueling journey back in April with hundreds of other soldiers. First, completing a basic fitness test consisting of 49 push ups, 59 sit ups, and a five mile run in 40 minutes. Over the course of a few weeks, they mastered military mountaineering, parachute jumps, and air assaults. At the root of everything, the course's purpose is still. Uh, you know, to create combat leaders and help make the rest of the Army better. Unlike the men, though, the female graduates won't be able to join the 75th Ranger Regiment since the force remains closed to women. Hannah Daniels for CBS News. An incredible feat there. Starting in January of 2016, more than 300,000 combat positions will be open to women, but the military is expected to keep some combat roles male only. All 96 Rangers will graduate this Friday during a ceremony in Fort Benning, Georgia. An evening for the children is the largest annual fundraiser for the folks at the Children's Advocacy Center. That event is this Friday, but already work is underway in putting it together. Our Deanne Stevens is out and about with the details. Hey, good afternoon, guys. It is a very special event happening this Friday night, and it's all for the children. We are here at the Children's Advocacy Center, and it is an evening for the children. Wynn Stevens is with us. This is always a fabulous event. You guys have had luau's, you've had special cookouts, and everything else. Um, you got Coach Mitchell and Jenna this weekend uh, helping out with the Children's Advocacy Center. Yeah, we're really excited about our event. Knight Wally and Chalifor Orthodontist are our presenting sponsor. Uh, Coach Mitchell and his wife are going to be there. The theme is uniquely Kentucky, so we're celebrating all the things that make the 
Commonwealth such a great place. We have bluegrass music. We have Kentucky artist Aaron Kaiser. We have some of those very special Kentucky beverages that we all like. Uh -huh. And a Kentucky Proud menu sponsored by Quantrell Auto Group. So we're really excited about it. You have some great silent auction items, too. We're going to step out of the way here so Ray can show everybody. Uh, you said it's all about Kentucky. You got your Kentucky basket, a few little drinks there. Right, some Kentucky Proud uh, sauces. Uh, Kentucky um, pillow and basket. A BMW racer doesn't have anything to do with Kentucky. It's just fun, and I have an 18-month-old, so uh, yeah, people are going to have to have fun riding it in Kentucky. Exactly, and people are going to have to outbid me for that one. Uh, a beautiful painting by a Kentucky artist, uh, and then this quilt, which we're really, really were touched by. You have to tell us the story of the quilt. So the quilt was commissioned by uh, the mother of one of our clients, and she was very specific about it. So the dark blue at the bottom sort of represents their feelings of. Um, hopelessness and despair when they first came to the Children's Advocacy Center. And if you notice, there's a couple of pinwheels that, that sort of begin to rise, and, and she said take flight into the hope and the healing that this place provides under the, uh, under the yellow sun there. Uh, and the, the special thing about it was her daughter learned to make those pinwheels in our girls group here at the center. So uh, we just, just think it's a really, really special event. It is a beautiful piece, that's for sure. The event is happening this Friday night at the Carrick House. It is an evening for the children. You can still donate. Tickets are sold out, but you can still help. We want you guys to help. Uh, you rely on funds to fund this place. You rely on a lot of private donations, too. We do. So we are a private nonprofit organization, just like uh, so many other great nonprofits in this community. Uh, about 60% of our funding comes from individuals and corporations who uh, are just touched by our mission and who want to help us out. So we are always looking for, for gifts. How do folks donate? Very good question. They can visit uh, <laughs> www.kykids.com. Dot org and make a donation there. They can also call our office, 859-514-1566. All right, check it out for yourself. It is all for the children here at the Children's Advocacy Center. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about. Back to you guys. Okay, they do important work. Yes, they do. Tracy Morgan is returning to his late-night TV roots, and Stephen Colbert becomes a GQ cover boy. Terry Okita has your eye on entertainment. Stevie Wonder pulled a three-show, three-city mini-tour Monday. The 25-time Grammy winner performed short pop-up concerts in Washington, Philadelphia, and New York to promote his latest concert tour. Stephen Colbert is on the current cover of GQ magazine. Inside, an article details his preparation for taking over for David Letterman. Colbert debuts as host of The Late Show three weeks from tonight. Oscar winner Ben Kingsley stars as an Indian cabbie turned driving instructor in the new film Learning to Drive. His newly separated student, played by Patricia Clarkson, needs the skill to visit her daughter. At the premiere last night in New York, the star said the film shows the benefits of chance friendships. Through the driving and through Sir Ben, through Darwan, his gorgeous character. She learns, oh my God, I had it all and I threw it away. Learning to Drive opens nationwide Friday. And comedian Tracy Morgan is returning to Saturday Night Live, at least for one night. The 46 year old funny man was a regular on the show from 1996 until 2003. He's been recuperating from critical injuries he sustained in a 2014 car accident that killed a fellow comedian. About his return to SNL, Morgan tweeted, Stoked to be going home. That's your eye on entertainment. Terry Okita for CBS News, Los Angeles. Actress and TV personality Rosie O'Donnell says her 17 year old daughter is missing. O'Donnell wrote on her website that Chelsea O'Donnell was last seen on August 11th and that police have been looking for her since Sunday. O'Donnell's publicist says that Chelsea ran away from her home in New York with her six month old therapy dog. O'Donnell says her daughter has a mental illness and that she stopped taking her medicine. Police say that they received a call Sunday that Chelsea had not returned home. A police spokesman says the teenager is not officially classified as missing and authorities will follow up with her family. Welcome back. Thank you, had, you. You had an exciting vacation looking at bears and I did. I was uh, in the Great Smoky Mountains, found a bear too, and I made it back all in one piece. And not bears in, in zoos. No, 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 the real bears kind. Outside where you the were staying. The real kind. Yeah, we had great weather, and, and you guys, how about the weather yeah, here? It was all right, right, yeah. right, Chris? Yeah, not bad at all. Not bad at all. You're welcome for the nice weather. Sorry about the bears. Uh, but we continue with some uh, pretty nice weather out there right now. Look at our live sky cam in Lexington. We've got a train just toward the skies. 
Looks like an episode of The Simpsons about ready to start in our sky as of now. Beautiful skies all across central and eastern Kentucky. Temperatures not bad, up to 80 into Corbin now. A lot of low and mid 80s showing up this afternoon across the entire region. And again, it's a mainly dry sky until we get into eastern and southeastern parts of the region. Isolated showers and thunderstorms in these areas. Over the next couple of days, though, thunderstorms really going to ramp up as a big time cold front marches toward the bluegrass. Say, guys, coming up here in the next half hour. We will time that front into sections of central and eastern Kentucky. We'll show you how the rain chances go up and the temperatures go the other way. All right, Chris, thank you. A seal escaping a shark and a police officer delivering a baby and a very young TV reporter. It's the video that we'll have you talking. Take a look at this. Seal one, shark zero. <laughs> That's how a research team off Cape Cod describes this encounter between a seal and a great white shark. That thing is massive. You can see the seal jump out of the water and wiggle away from the lunging shark. The Atlantic White Shark Conservancy shot this amazing video on Monday. Mm. Well, we know that officers often go above and beyond the call of duty. This time, a Seattle officer delivered a woman's baby on the side of the road, and the whole scene was recorded on a patrol car's dashboard. The officer pulled over a speeding car just before 4 a.m. That's when the driver opened his door and shouted that his wife was in labor. The officer called for an ambulance, but it didn't get there in time, so the officer helped deliver a healthy baby girl. That family and new baby all doing well. G'day, Kendall. This is Meadow Valley reporting live from the Echo. There you have him, a seven year old, just maybe the world's most adorable TV correspondent, Mater Vandeleur, served as guest reporter for Australia's Channel 7 recently. He reported from an annual agricultural show in Queensland. As you can see, Mater looked quite poised and professional as he talked to attendees, workers, and even some farm animals. Oh, I wish we could have heard more from him. He has that little tie and looks yeah. very professional. He's got to take our job. Looks the part. Step right in. Come on up this All way, right? right? All right, stick with us. We have more coming your way right now at 5 o'clock.